Hi, the Pragmatic Luther back again with part two of making tooling for making rosette tiles. If you haven't watched the first one of these videos, I'd encourage you to watch it because that one showed how to make the discs required to make the inside radius here, if you can see that, the inside radius of a rosette tile. Today, I'm going to deal with making the tooling to cut the outside radius. So this, this one is a little bit more difficult, but it's not that bad. And although I did mine with the benefit of a milling machine, which turned out to be very handy, but I'm going to try and show you how you can do this on just a drill press, or even if you have a small router or even a Dremel tool, you could probably make this tooling to do what you need to do. So now my rosette drawing requires for what I'm doing right now that I hit this dimension for the outer radius of this inner layer of tiles. That dimension happens to be a radius of two and four hundred and sixty eight thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to use a circle cutter on a drill press because where I used a milling machine to do this before, if you don't have one, then you need a method that's something that you can really work with. So I'm going to use my circle cutter here. These are easy to get. As I mentioned in the other video, if you don't have one, get one. As long as you run these under at 250 RPMs and under, you're okay. And the cutter that comes with them is just cut at a bevel for circle cutting, but you can regrind these cutters um, to any shape and style you want. And these are just high speed steel, quarter by quarter inch uh, metal lathe uh, cutter blanks. And you can get those almost anywhere, you know, Amazon and different things like that, if you don't have them available locally. So to, excuse me, to set this up, I just need to get this dimension uh, correct between the point of the tool and the edge of the tool bit. And that just required some subtraction. I want 202 and 468 thousandths of an inch minus half the dimension of that center drill at 125 thousandths, leaving us with two and 343 thousandths of an inch that we need to set up. And so I have done that here. Uh, quick recommendation, drop your bit down far enough so that you can easily measure between the drill shank and the cutting piece here and you can get that accurate. And this will be fussy because when you tighten this Allen screw down, this thing is going to jump a little bit. So be prepared to tweak that. But I've managed to hit the dimension I want pretty easily. And I use a dial caliper to do that. Obviously, um, a digital caliper is just as good. So to make the tool, you can use about anything, a scrap of plywood, a piece of hardwood. I've even used... Uh, You'll see later in the video, I used a piece of Corian countertop to make one of these. So you have a lot of options available. Um, I started with a piece of MDF for the demonstration. Happens to be three inches wide, but that dimension could vary greatly. Uh, three inches just sounded good. Two inches probably worked just fine. Doesn't really matter. I did, however, strike a good center line on this. I wanted that to be pretty darn accurate just for convenience. Um, it's just going to make things a little easier. So I have my center line. Now, given the dimension that I want to hit, um, that dimension only needs to be way out here. The cutter only needs to hit way out here on the end. So I'm not going to go way back in here, but I'm going to get out here and center up and drill way out here. Maybe you can see this better if I rotate this for you a little bit if I just hit way out here. So I'm going to set up the next scene where I get this clamp down and then we'll do just that operation. Okay, we're all set up to do this job here. Um, one of the things I want to point out is that if you can see this very well, I don't know, I have taken the time to center punch that pretty hard just to make sure I'm on an absolute spot and I've centered my piece underneath the drill so that we're all ready to go. Uh, I have also rotated my drill press table so that I can get a clamp over the end of this. Uh, clamping this is very important. If you've not used a center, or excuse me, a circle cutter before, 
Uh, these things have a lot of leverage. They have to be run at low speed. And you cannot hold anything with your bare hands when you're operating one of these. It has to be clamped down. So I'm ready to go here. I also wanted to make a check to make sure that the cutter and the beam of this thing does not hit that clamp. That would certainly be bad news for everybody if that happened. So we're all set to go. I have my dimensions set up. I'm clamped down. My drill press table is tightened down. So I'm going to demonstrate this uh, very quickly. And then we're going to move the cutter out and make a second cut after that. So here we go. Now, I only have to make this cutter drop down about 60 thousandths of an inch because that's the thickness of my inlay material. But you can guess on that, and it, it's not really, really critical at all. So I don't want to move too quickly with any of this. I just want to descend it there, my cutter hit. And I'm going to drop down probably more than the 60 thousand. Probably about a hundred thousand right there. Okay. That's all there is to that. And that's dusty, as you can see. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to loosen the beam of this thing. And I'm going to move it out. Now the question is, where do I move it to? And I'm going to set that up off camera and then re-explain it when I come back on. All right, I've set up my next dimension here. In my case, this needed to be 2 and 568 thousandths of an inch or 62 or something like that. Um, a quick reminder, if you're doing this by this method, once you have this piece clamped down and you have that center, do not move the table, don't move the piece, don't move anything except the beam of your uh, circle cutter because if you lose that center, all bets are off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a pass around here to, to cut the outside edge of that radius. And I'm going to keep right on going down through uh, the piece. I'm going to literally take all of that off, or at least most of it. My cutter may not be able to do this. Okay, I had to stop because my cutter was starting to radius this over. It was catching right here. We don't want to do that. But that's all right. We can take this off by any means we want to. So now my next step is to set this up on another jig that I'll show you in the next scene. So I've wasted this remainder here. I've gone to the bandsaw and I've cut that off. But you can see uh, that I've intentionally missed this surface right here. I'm going to touch it probably later. But I wanted to stay away from it with the bandsaw. So I just left a little bit of excess right there. Now, an upside of doing this with a circle cutter is that by nature of this, I've actually done it twice. So if I kind of mess this up somehow, I've got another chance to uh, recover by using this end of the, of the tool because it's centered on this. So this thing now is going to go on this table. This table is very simple. It's just a piece of plywood with a three quarter inch wide guide put on it so that it fits into the table here on my disc sander. And it is adjustable. I'm not going to adjust it right now because I have it set up for the operation that we're about to do. But I made this so that it will slide between these two cleats right here. It's not dovetailed or anything. It just slides it through there. And I can clamp it down tight by means of this mechanism here. Got a T-nut on the underside so that you can lock that down. So we put this on here. 
and the tool then slips down over that dowel pin and it's going to be a snug fit should be a snug fit anyway it's a lot more snug than I'd like it to be but you're better off with a good fit than you are with something loose so now I want this thing to rotate against the sander and hit just that edge and in the end what I want is that two and five hundred and sixty three thousandths or whatever dimension that was I mentioned before and I'm not going to do that right here because as I said I have this set up for something else but I'm going to pull this off and go with another tool that I've made for this so we'll do that right now in the next segment so I made this tool this happens to be a piece of Corian I mentioned before I guess but it's the same thing as what I just did in the piece of MDF um, a little bit different size for this particular operation that I need here but I've made this up and I slipped it down over this center dowel and by the way these center dowels you could use any quarter inch diameter rod or I wouldn't recommend eighth inch but you could use any quarter inch I like these these are hardened steel dowel pins they're very durable you can't even touch a file to them they're too hard they hold up real well so what I've done is taken the time to swing this around on the sander with it running until I get this dimension right where I want it and that's going to leave me uh, the arc that I need the idea being here that I have ground the inner arc I don't know if you can see this real well but I ground the inner arc for this on my disc sander and then I match that arc in this tool and then I'm matching the outer radius with this jig on the sander that's what this is all about in the end so you need a way to hold your work down you can't just hold that with your finger so I just made this up this I happen to make this out of acrylic because I happen to have a scrap piece of half inch thick acrylic and you see it's got a a little lip on the end of it here that will drop down and hold on to the workpiece and this is easy to do because I set it up drilled a quarter inch hole with this thing and then I drilled this mounting hole here right through the two pieces at the same time and then I threaded this for quarter 20 because I happen to have this little knob here and that's going to act now as my clamp um, you could do this in any number of ways I have another one here uh, that relies on this toggle clamp which is this is overkill but you know I just did it anyway so once you have this made up and you have it adjusted you're going to take your pieces that you have ground on the disc sander and here's a, a length that I've done and I don't know if you can see this real well but I have taken a common small drafting compass and I put a piece of steel rod in it and I made sort of a hermaphrodite caliper if you will so that I can repeat that arc and I do this intentionally oversized by, you know, I don't know, two, three, thirty seconds of an inch, maybe a little less, so that I know I'm oversized. I make those marks on there, and I need pearl. So I did the same thing with the pearl, and I think there you can might you might see that pencil mark a little bit better. Did the same thing there, mark that out, and then I rough cut those on the bandsaw, and then I cut each one of those lengths into segments like these out of these pieces of wood. So now all I need to do with these segments is to put them in my tool like so. This is a little bit clumsy with this threaded piece, but it's what I came up with for today. Something a little faster would be nice, but 
this is going to work just fine. So I'm going to turn the sander on, we're going to swing this arc, and we're going to cut that tile. So being very careful not to get my hands into that, I would then loosen this up and pull out the finished tile. And I'll do this until I have enough tiles to complete the job. This is very adjustable. Uh, the dimension that you have between this center and this outer edge is absolutely critical. But you can tweak it a few thousandths of an inch by moving this platen and you can get away with it. So this works really, really well. Now the last thing you'll need to do is to make a circular miter box, if you will. Um, you're going to go back over to your drill press and with your circle cutter in a scrap of plywood or whatever you have, you're going to cut a circle with this outside diameter right here being the same as the outside diameter of your tile. And that's pretty easy to hit. If you could measure for the first one, you can measure for this one. And after you've cut that, you're just going to move your cutter in and make that opening wide enough so that the tile will slip down in there with reasonable ease. So I have another one already made up here and ready to go. What I've done is I need to cut up, make a cut across here for my saw. And I use the aid of this rabbited block. You could do this any way you want to. But I just use that as a guide to get me started and cut down through there. Now, the beauty of this is really wonderful because even if this cut is not perfectly square, either this way or this way, if you mark each one of your tiles, as I have done here, I've marked these, I've selected the top of each one. If each tile faces up the same way, and if each tile goes through the miter box in the same direction, everything is going to turn out just fine. So I selected the length of the tiles that I need, and I bring a tile piece in. I pointed a dowel so that I can hold that down. I'm going to cut that off. get the chip out of the way, and I'm going to move this right up to that nail. Can you see that? There's a, I put a brad right there. That represents the length of each tile. In this case, I want my tiles to be all exactly the same length. So I come up against that nail, hold that down again, and I make my cut, lift the tile out, and I'm good to go. So you can see that the tiles are the same length, they're the same width, and we should be good to go. Can you see that? I'm holding the camera kind of funny here. And you should be good to go with that. So this is just a sample of a rosette. Uh, this one, the material is nice, but it's really cheesy. This will never see the light of day anywhere. Uh, but this is done by exactly the means that I just showed you how to make tools for. These are individual tiles, and they're, you can see they're nicely matched, and you don't see joints too much. Now there's an upside to this. When you cut your rosette channel and inlay these, if you don't have a perfect fit around some of these, if the radii are not exact uh, matches to what you've done, you can glue those down as long as you've got a tight groove, and you can come inside and cut out a ring for purfling, and the same on the outside. Um, I'm not going to do that with what I just demonstrated. These are going to go pretty much, um, at least the two rings of tiles have to match in the center, and there will be purfling on the outside. But there is a little bit of wiggle room, and if your tiles don't fit together perfectly at the joints, it's all right. Take a sanding block, uh, some 220 paper, and glue it to a flat block, and you can tweak those joints and make them fit. 
You can also tweak the outer and inner areas if you need to. Um, if you've done this correctly, it should match up very nicely, but there's nothing that says uh, you're going to meet absolute precision here. We're not making engine parts. We're, we're trying to make rosettes, and, and I don't think we're going to achieve uh, precision within one or two thousandths of an inch every time we turn on the tool. So a little bit of tweaking may be involved. But this gives you a basic idea of how all of that works out. So there you have it for making tools to make rosette tiles. Now, I know this was a multi-step process, and I know some of you might look at this and say, ah, pshaw on that stuff, and, and that's okay. Um, but I just want to remind you that I'm trying to show you the possibilities, show you some things that you can do. And for those that are uh, not real experienced at this, hope you get some ideas and, and get a leg up on how you might perform some of these tasks. It is difficult to make some of these tools. I won't fool you about that. But if you apply yourself to uh, very good precision and you're willing to recover from a mistake, sometimes you have to do something twice. You can make these tools. And while I'm not going to show them over here in the corner, I got a box full of those discs that I use for sanding and um, a whole bunch of these uh, these little miter boxes like this that I made up and the other tools that I use on the disc sander to make rosettes of different sizes and styles. And you can go from there and do any number of things. You can even change the way you cut the miters in these. You can angle your saw to achieve different things. So there's a lot of fun to be had. And if you, as I said, if you do this precisely, I think you can have wonderful results and make some really nice creative rosettes for yourself. Thanks again for watching. I hope you'll put a like on the video and maybe subscribe to my channel. I am Kevin Ledoux, the Pragmatic Luther here at Ledoux Guitars.